Healthy, starting from this video, we are entering a new chapter of this TEM course. Finally, we'll be learning imaging using TEM. When we think about the imaging formation from the electron beam, we treat the electron beam as plane waves. We need just two parameters to define any wave, that's amplitude and the phase. If from one pixel to another, there is a difference in the amplitude of the wave or the phase of the wave, we will see contrast. From the contrast, we interpret the microstructural information. If the contrast is caused by the difference in the amplitude, it is called the amplitude contrast. If the contrast is caused by the difference in phase, then that gives rise to phase contrast. Under the amplitude contrast, we also have the mass thickness contrast and the diffraction contrast. In this video, we'll focus on the mass thickness contrast and we'll touch upon the diffraction contrast. In fact, we'll spend a lot of time using diffraction contrast to study crystallographic defects such as dislocations. And in the next video, we'll briefly discuss the phase contrast. You may have heard the word contrast more than 20 times in the past minute. So what is contrast exactly? Contrast can be quantified in terms of the differences in intensity between two adjacent pixels. I2 has higher intensity, I1 has lower intensity. To human eyes, if the contrast is less than 5%, the human eyes cannot see it. This is just a brain teaser. Can you see the difference? Can you see the contrast? Here's one note here. Usually, if the image is high in intensity or high in brightness, the contrast is low. The math behind it is very simple. I'll leave it to you to figure that out. I just realized there is a typo in this slide here. It's actually mass thickness contrast in TEM, not in STEM. I apologize for that. The origin of mass thickness contrast really comes from the scattering theory we learned a long time ago. For higher Z samples, they scatter electrons more strongly, therefore there's less intensity in the direct beam, and it will appear darker in the image. Similarly, for thicker samples, there's also more scattering and less intensity from the direct beam, and it will appear darker. If the sample is super, super thick, the electron beam will not be able to go through, and there will be no intensity at all. How do we use this knowledge? to explain the mass thickness contrast in TEM. Looking at the example on the right, one part is lower mass thickness and the other part is higher mass thickness. Let's look at the lower mass thickness part first. Because the object and the image are flipped, so on the opposite side you see high intensity. Similarly, when you look at the higher mass thickness part, it will give you lower intensity. The difference in intensity gives you the contrast. Let's look at a few examples that math thickness gives contrast. The example from the left is from the textbook. You have latex particles on carbon. Where the latex particles are sitting, locally it's thicker and they appear darker. The example in the middle is also from the textbook. It is a two-phase polymer stained by some heavy metal atoms. Only one phase is chemically bonded with the metal ions, and that phase appears to be darker due to higher Z. The example on the right is a mitochondria surrounded by cytoplasm. Because the membranes are stained by the heavy metal atoms, they give you the contrast from higher Z. Few more examples from the mass thickness contrast in TEM. The first shows the myelin sheath wrapping around a neuron. The one in the middle shows the HIV viruses, and the very last one shows the Wuhan coronavirus, which is ravaging the city of Wuhan right now. Based on the examples shown here, you can tell that the mass thickness contrast in TEM are largely used by the polymer scientists and the biologists. In fact, the knowledge on the structures of the cell organelles and the viruses are closely related to the design and development of TEM. In the scanning transmission electron microscopy STEM, we can also get contrast from mass and thickness differences. The different sets of detectors, there is the bright field detector, the annular dark field detector, and high angle annular dark field detectors. 
high angle annular dark field is also called Hardiff because the Hardiff detector collects electrons scattered at very large angles that gives you the mass thickness contrast. Let's look at the example from the textbook. On the left, it is a high res image of the epitaxial germanium on silicon. Because silicon and germanium they have the same crystal structures, both are diamond cubic, you cannot tell them apart. However, in the Hardiff image, because we know germanium has higher Z, it will appear to be brighter compared to silicon. Moving to the second type of the amplitude contrast, diffraction contrast. Here, I'll just give you a taste because we will spend a lot of time on this topic in the future. The takeaway message of this slide is when you're trying to get microstructural information from diffraction contrast, you always tilt the crystal to the two beam condition as shown by the diffraction pattern on the right. You can see the intensity of the diffracted beam B is similar to the intensity of the direct beam A. When the images are taken under the two beam condition, it will make your micrograph analysis and interpretation much, much easier. If you only use the direct beam A to form the image, it will be a bright field TEM image. If you use the diffracted beam B to form the image, it will be a layman's dark field image. We have discussed how to form the proper dark field images in video 9.2, and we'll discuss more on this topic when we introduce the weak beam dark field technique. To tilt a crystal to a two-beam condition, the easiest way is to tilt the crystal first to the low index zone axis. For example, if you are interested in exciting the 200 spot, what you have to do is to tilt the crystal along the Kikuchi line that is perpendicular to the G-vector. You can use the same technique to achieve the two-beam condition with other diffraction spots. Last slide of today's video. Dislocation imaging is also from diffraction contrast. If you do not understand what I'm going to say next, do not worry too much, because we'll cover this again in later videos in more details. The best diffraction condition to image dislocations is actually not the two-beam condition. The micrograph on the left shows what dislocations look like when the crystal is tilted to the exact two-beam condition. What you want to do is to tilt your crystal slightly away from the two-beam condition to introduce a new term called the deviation parameter. From the example above, you can see that as the deviation parameter gets larger and larger, the image becomes clearer and clearer. To wrap up, there are three types of contrast in TEM. Mass thickness contrast, diffraction contrast, and phase contrast. Both the mass thickness contrast and the diffraction contrast are also called the amplitude contrast. In the next video, we'll introduce you to phase contrast and discuss what information we can obtain from phase contrast.